Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I'm Alejandro de la Fuente. I'm the director of the Afro-Latin American Research Institute here at Harvard University. And I am deeply honored, and I am deep, it is a great pleasure uh, to stand here before you today to welcome Luis Almagro, the visionary general secretary of the Organization of American States, a tireless champion of democracy, social justice, and human rights in Latin America, and his collaborators, Betilde Muñoz Bogosian, Director of the Department of Social Inclusion, and Roberto Rojas Davila, Chief of Section of Groups in Situation of Vulnerability, both of them of the Secretariat for Access to Rights and Equity at the Organization of American States. Secretary Almagro is here today to sign a historic agreement between the Organization of American States and the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research at Harvard University, which is represented here by its founding director, Professor Henry Louis Gates, Jr. It is an agreement that has been almost a year in the making and that Roberto Rojas and I conceived as we both were trying to think of concrete and meaningful ways to implement the mandate of the United Nations resolution that proclaims 2015-2024 as the International Decade for People of African Descent. Two years ago, the Afro-Latin American Research Institute launched an ambitious program of consultations with activists from the Afro-descendant movement in Latin America, representatives of international agencies, foundations and organizations, people like Roberto, non-governmental organizations, government officials and policymakers, and scholars, inviting them to come together to articulate concrete goals for the decennial. We seek to contribute significantly to the second objective of the decennial, I quote, promote a greater knowledge of and respect for the diverse heritage, culture, and contribution of people of African descent to the development of societies in Latin America. The idea for this agreement was born in the midst of those consultations and those conversations. Recognizing that the General Secretariat of the Organization of American States shall promote economic, social, juridical, educational, scientific, and cultural relations among all the member states of the organization. Recognizing also that the General Secretariat of the Organization of American States has the authority to establish and promote relations of cooperation. Bearing in mind that the Hutchins Center supports research on the history and culture of people of African descent the world over and provides a forum for collaboration and the ongoing exchange of ideas and to increase public awareness and understanding of this vital field of study. The parties here represented agreed to develop special relations of cooperation on matters of common interest, particularly focusing in the areas of investigation and technical and academic assistance relating to the issue of people of African descent. The Secretariat for Access to Rights and Equity within the Organization of American States and the Afro-Latin American Research Institute at the Hutchins Center are responsible for coordinating activities under this agreement. And I very much look forward to us working together in its implementation. Thank you. I know, I do. <laughs> now we switch. Now we switch. There you go. Okay. Now Secretary Almagro will make some remarks. <clears throat> Not some remarks, I have a long speech. <laughs> I am honored to be here at one of the world's uh, most 
prestigious universities to initiate a more systematic cooperation between the OES and this institution, starting with this collaboration on the promotion of the rights of the people of African descent in America. Since its creation in 1948, the Organization of American States has worked with member states to promote democracy, human rights, development, and security. In 2015, the OAS prioritized the need to bring the OAS closer to all people of the Americas and work for more rights for more people. In light of this new way of understanding the role of the OAS, we are, for the first time, putting the agenda of the rights of Afro-descendant people in the core of the work of the General Secretariat. This is a historic depth of our region and of our organization. Indeed, approximately 200 million people living in our region are of African descent. Yet, despite comprising one-third of the region population, Afro-descendants are one of the most vulnerable minority groups in the hemisphere. In our region, responses have come by way of commitments and obligations that the states have entered into that prioritize the protection of the rights of Afro-descendants against racism, racial discrimination, and intolerance. Surely international public law provides several instruments against these scores. At the universal level, at the United Nations has driven substantial efforts and led the way through the work of the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination that has prioritized the monitoring of the implementation of the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. The Americans have not stayed behind. In the inter-American system, a number of mechanisms have also been created, created to tackle this phenomenon and encourage respect for the right of people of African descent in the Americas. The OES Inter-American Democratic Charter, adopted 11 September 2001, won by a special session of the General Assembly of the Organization of American States held in Lima, Peru, recognizes that the elimination of all forms of discrimination and respect for ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity in the Americas are key in order to contribute to strengthen democracy and citizen participation. Apart from this consensus document that establishes member states' commitment to democracy and democratic principle, we also benefit from the thematic work that the reportership of the rights of Afro-descendants and against racial discrimination of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, as well as the commitment shown by countries in the Americas through various resolutions that to refer to the right of people of African descent. There is, however, a key juridical instrument that consolidates the region obligations regarding the right of vulnerable groups, including people of African descent. In 2013, after seven years of negotiation, the OES General Assembly adopted an Inter-American Convention Against Racism, Racial Discrimination and Related Forms of Intolerance. This convention represents an important step toward the elimination of discrimination and intolerance in the Americas by generating a commitment from state parties to design and implement reforms, policies, and legislation that level the playing field for Afro-descendants and promote the full exercise of their <coughs> civil, political, social, economic, and cultural rights. Moreover, June 2016 saw the approval at the OES General of the Plan of Action for the Decade of Persons of African Descent in the Americas. 2016-2025. This plan of action marks the strongest OAS commitment with the people of Afri African descent in the Americas to date. It serves as a regional adaptation to the United Nations International Decade for Afro Descendants, mandating work for both member states and the General Secretariat of the Organization of American States to work in the recognition, justice, and development of Afro descendant people. Through its Department of Social Inclusion of the Secretary for Access to Rights and Equity of, and Equity of the OES, General Secretariat is responsible for executing and monitoring the implementation of this plan of action and coordinating its activities, and will collaborate with other bodies of the Inter-American system in this regard. In celebration of the International Decade of People of African Descent, the Organization of American States and the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research at Harvard University are signing this agreement. 
our purpose, to collaborate on proposals that promote a positive change in the lives of people of African descent in the Americas. For the OAS, the collaboration with the Hatchin Center for African African American Research and its Afro-Latino American Research Institute is extremely important as it will allow to jointly produce research on the history and culture of people of African descent in the Americas, thereby working to promote the recognition of their contributions to society as the plan of action stipulates um, by providing a forum where scholars, intellectuals, activists and policy makers can engage in exchanges and debates regarding the rights of people of African descent. In closing, I just want to say that I'm confident that the signing of this agreement and the joint work we will develop in the framework of, this, in, of the international decades of Afro-descendants marks just the beginning of a wider and stronger collaboration between the OES and the Harvard University. A collaboration that can permeate the work of the OES in all its pillars, <coughs> democracy, development, security and human rights. Moreover, the signing of this agreement helped us to fulfill, fulfill our commitment towards the rights of millions of persons of African descent in the Americas. Millions of persons who are desperately seeking the recognition, the justice and the development that they deserve. I thank you for hosting me here at Harvard and I look forward for further, to further collaboration. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, when we became the Hutchins Center in the year 2013, one of our most critical additions was the Afro-Latin American Research Institute. Afro-Latin America is one of our biggest growth areas, and that wouldn't be happening without the dedication, hard-headedness, and single-mindedness of one person in this room, the person who made this historic event possible, and that is my good friend, Alejandro De La Fuente. Give it up for Alejandro. <laughs> Affectionately known as El Jefe to some of them. <laughs> the, um, Alejandro inspired this, conceived of it, and um, he's the only person I know who could have gotten the Secretary General to come all the way up here to Harvard. And it, it, it's just such a great honor to me, um, and it's quite humbling. Um, so it's our honor to welcome you to Harvard, Your Excellency, and um, to pledge to help you in any way we can in addressing this serious problem. You know, filming uh, for PBS um, and BBC, my series Black and Latin America brought me into contact with scholars and activists of color in Latin America and throughout Latin America. And that experience was transformative to me. You know, I don't know about the other Americans in this room. I was born in 1950, and I didn't even know there were black people in the New World, other outside the United States. The first time I knew, well, my father, who was, um, loved the Episcopal Church, the Gateses were all Episcopal Anglicans. My father used to talk about his first ambition was to be a priest, and he had a Haitian priest at the Black Episcopal Church in Cumberland, Maryland, where the Gates are from. It's halfway between Pittsburgh and Washington. My family's lived there a quarter of a millennium, 250 years, which I think is very rare for any, anybody in this room. <laughs> any, I mean, all of my ancestors on both my mother's side and my father's side have lived in this same valley for 250 years. And my father used to talk about this Haitian priest who inspired him, and he was his altar boy, and daddy used to think about being a priest. But my father loved baseball. And baseball was the national pastime in the United States. And as I said, we lived halfway between Pittsburgh and Washington. We would go to games in Pittsburgh. Why? Because the American League was based in Washington, and they only had white players. Pittsburgh had, uh, you, you could see the Dodgers come, the, the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers and then the, the LA Dodgers, but you could see any time you were there, Roberto Clemente. And there was Roberto Clemente and I